Have you ever pondered the concept of an eternal sin, a transgression so grave that it is unforgivable? The idea is indeed daunting, isn't it? It's like a stain so deep and indelible that no amount of scrubbing, no matter how fervent, can cleanse it. Eternal sin, in its most basic definition, is a sin that is unforgiven, not because of its severity, but because it is not repented. This unyielding concept is deeply rooted in religious discourse, and various interpretations have been proposed by different faiths. But today, we will be focusing on one of the world's most extensive religious institutions, the Catholic Church. In the Catholic context, the concept of eternal sin carries a profound significance. It is not merely about the act of sinning, but rather the state of the soul that refuses to seek forgiveness. It is a topic that has been the subject of countless homilies, theological debates, and even casual conversations among the faithful. Eternal sin is not just a theological concept, it is a moral challenge that affects how we approach our lives, our relationships, and our spirituality. It raises questions about guilt, forgiveness, repentance, and redemption. It forces us to confront the deepest corners of our conscience and examine our relationship with the divine. As we embark on this journey of exploration, it is crucial to remember that the concept of eternal sin is not about fostering fear or guilt. Instead, it is about understanding the depths of God's mercy and the breadth of human freedom. It is about recognizing the profound responsibility that comes with our capacity to choose between right and wrong, good and evil. So, are you ready to delve into this complex, fascinating, and often misunderstood concept? Are you prepared to challenge your assumptions, broaden your perspective, and deepen your understanding of your faith? If so, then buckle up, because we're about to embark on a thought-provoking exploration of eternal sin. Let's delve deeper into the Catholic Church's understanding of this intriguing concept. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, a comprehensive text detailing Catholic doctrine, sheds light on this matter. Now let's delve into the Catholic Church's position on the idea of eternal sin, as articulated in the Catechism. This important document, which serves as a guide to the teachings and traditions of the Catholic Church, provides us with a clear and concise understanding of this complex theological concept. In the Catechism, the issue of eternal sin is addressed in paragraph 1864. It states, There are no limits to the mercy of God, but anyone who deliberately refuses to accept his mercy by repenting, rejects the forgiveness of his sins and the salvation offered by the Holy Spirit. Such hardness of heart can lead to final impenitence and eternal loss. From this excerpt, we can understand that the Catholic Church identifies only one form of eternal sin, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. This is a sin that, by its very nature, rejects the forgiveness and salvation offered by God. It's not a specific act or a particular utterance, but rather a state of the heart and soul that stubbornly denies God's mercy. What's important to note here is that the Church's emphasis is not on the condemnation of the sinner, but rather on God's limitless mercy. The eternal sin, as per the Catechism, is not so much about God refusing to forgive, but about the sinner refusing to accept God's forgiveness. This understanding of eternal sin underscores the Catholic Church's broader teaching on sin and forgiveness. It reaffirms the Church's belief in the power of repentance and the limitless nature of God's mercy. It's not about a vengeful God, but rather about a merciful God whose forgiveness is constantly available to all, even to those who have committed the gravest of sins. This leads us to the question, what exactly does blasphemy against the Holy Spirit mean? The term blasphemy against the Holy Spirit may sound complex, but it can be understood in simpler terms. To grasp this concept, let's break it down. At its core, blasphemy refers to speaking against someone or something in a manner that is disrespectful or irreverent. When you link this term with the Holy Spirit, it takes on a deeper significance within the Catholic faith. In essence, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is the deliberate and conscious refusal to accept God's mercy and forgiveness. It's not a casual misstep or a momentary lapse in judgment. It's a persistent and willful decision to reject the love and compassion that God offers. Now, you might be wondering, why is this sin considered eternal? The answer lies in the nature of the act itself. By consciously choosing to reject God's mercy, a person is essentially closing the door to God's love. They're cutting off the lifeline that could save them. This is why it's considered a definitive self-exclusion from communion with God and the blessed. Think of it like this. Imagine you're out at sea and you fall overboard. A life buoy is thrown to you, but instead of grabbing it, you push it away. The act of pushing the buoy away doesn't cause you to drown. It's the water that does that. 
but by rejecting the buoy, you're choosing not to be saved. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is like pushing away that life buoy. God's mercy is always there, ready to save us. But if we consciously and willfully push it away, we're choosing to drown in our sins. We're choosing to exclude ourselves from the communion with God and the blessed. This is what makes this sin eternal. It's important to remember that it's not God who condemns us to this eternal sin. It's our own choice, our own rejection of his love and mercy. Now that we understand the meaning, let's explore why this sin is considered unforgivable. Why would a loving God deem any sin unforgivable? This question has perplexed many, and it's not one to be taken lightly. It revolves around a particular sin, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, often referred to as the unforgivable sin. But before we jump to conclusions, let's delve deeper into the nature of this sin and why it's considered unforgivable. At its core, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is a conscious and deliberate rejection of God's mercy. It's not that God is unwilling to forgive, quite the contrary. God's love and mercy are boundless, reaching out to every corner of creation. His forgiveness is there for all who seek it. The crux of the matter, however, lies in the human heart. Forgiveness requires an open heart. It requires acknowledgement of wrongs done, a sincere desire for change, and acceptance of God's mercy. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, then, is a willful turning away from this mercy, a refusal to acknowledge one's need for forgiveness. Imagine it this way. God's forgiveness is like a lifeline thrown to a person drowning in a rough sea. But if that person refuses to grab the lifeline, they remain in peril. Not because the lifeline isn't there, but because they've chosen not to accept it. The unforgivable nature of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is not a reflection of God's limitations, but rather, our own. It's a testament to the power of free will, the ability we have to choose our path, even when that path leads us away from salvation. This is a sobering thought, one that underscores the gravity of our choices and the transformative power of repentance. It reminds us that while God's love is infinite, we have the capacity to turn away from it. So, when we talk about the unforgivable sin, we're really talking about our own capacity for hardness of heart, for choosing self over God, for turning our back on the very source of life and love. This brings us to the conclusion of our discussion. The unforgivable sin is not about God's unwillingness to forgive, but about our unwillingness to accept his mercy. So, what have we learned about the concept of an eternal sin? Well, we've journeyed through an intricate exploration of this profound aspect of Catholic teaching. We've delved into the Catholic Church's perspective on eternal sin, a concept that, admittedly, can be difficult to grasp. Firstly, from the Catholic Church's viewpoint, eternal sin isn't about punishment. Rather, it is about a conscious and deliberate rejection of God's love and mercy. It's a refusal to accept the divine forgiveness that's always extended to us. This is a concept deeply rooted in the Church's teachings and doctrines, and it calls for a profound understanding from each of us. Then, we explored the idea of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, which the Catechism of the Catholic Church identifies as the eternal sin. It's not about a careless word or momentary anger, it's about a persistent hardness of heart, a refusal to repent and accept the loving forgiveness that the Holy Spirit offers us. It's a deliberate, ongoing choice to reject that divine mercy. And why is it considered unforgivable? Not because God is unwilling to forgive, but because forgiveness requires acceptance. If we reject God's mercy, we make ourselves incapable of receiving it. We close the door that God has always left open for us. In essence, the concept of an eternal sin is a stark reminder of the profound reality of free will. It emphasizes the responsibility we bear for our choices and actions, but it also underscores the limitless mercy of God, always ready to forgive, always waiting for us to turn back to Him. This concept challenges us to reflect on our openness to God's mercy and forgiveness in our lives. The lesson isn't one of fear, but of hope. It's a call to remain receptive to God's mercy, to keep our hearts open, and to always strive for reconciliation. Remember, the door to God's mercy is always open. It is up to us to walk through it.